A report could be coming on the leak of the Supreme Court's draft opinion on Roe versus Wade. Justice Neil Gorsuch says the high court has been investigating the leak. The justice said yesterday, quote, the chief justice appointed an internal committee to oversee the investigation. That committee has been busy and we're looking forward to their report. I hope soon, end quote. But it's unclear if the report will be made public. The Supreme Court's draft opinion on overturning Roe versus Wade was leaked to Politico in May, and the court officially published its ruling in June. Gorsuch condemned the leak. He suggested that it may have been intended to influence the outcome of the ruling. Travel to the battleground state of Ohio today. President Biden vows to boost chip production and revive the industrial West. Here's the president speaking at the groundbreaking of an Ohio Intel plant today. It's time to bury the label Rust Belt and call it as Pat said, the Silicon Heartland. Folks, the future of the chip industry is going to be made in America. Intel's $20 billion project there will create thousands of jobs. And Biden used the occasion to tout the recently passed CHIPS Act. But critics say the legislation would allow companies to use taxpayer money to invest in China. Biden on Friday said that won't happen while promising to revive an industrial Midwest in the United States. Is the government using American tax dollars to buy products made with forced labor in China? That's what lawmakers on the House Oversight Committee want to know, and they're calling for an investigation to get answers. Entities Melina Weiskup reports. 18 lawmakers on the House Oversight Committee are asking the Department of Homeland Security's Inspector General to launch an immediate investigation into whether tax dollars are being used to buy solar panels made in China, describing the country as an adversary with a record of human rights abuses and slave labor. 80% uh, of the polysilicon capacity, 80% of the solar panel manufacturing capacity, that's all in China. Specifically, the lawmakers are raising concerns about the U.S. Virgin Islands. The territory is transitioning to solar power, and its governor has plans to make St. Croix 100% powered by solar energy. The DHS awarded the islands $4.4 million in 2021 for a new 28-megawatt solar microgrid project on St. Croix. Now, this criticism from House Republicans comes just months after the Biden administration waived tariffs on Southeast Asian countries as a way to import more solar panel parts because the administration said we had an inadequate supply of solar cells and modules. Now, this is important because the Commerce Department has been investigating whether China is using those very Southeast Asian countries, countries like Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia and Cambodia, in order to set up shop there and get a around existing U.S. tariffs, in practical terms, here's exactly what that means. China will, you know, mostly assemble a solar panel, send it to another country, that maybe Malaysia, to have a few screws tightened, and then send it off to the United States. You know, there's a big, you know, internal tension between the Biden administration right now because they want to increase the amount of solar that's on the grid pretty dramatically uh, over the next 10 years. But you can't really do that if you're dependent on this country that is responsible for 80 percent of all the solar panel uh, production if you care about the fact that they're using slave labor to do it. So they're kind of relaxing their moral guidelines in order to increase the amount of solar. China has dominated the solar industry through heavy subsidies. And with that latest Inflation Reduction Act that President Biden just signed into law, the U.S. is now beginning to subsidize renewable energy. But without yet having the capacity to produce those solar panels and other renewable energy parts here at home. And it will take a very long time before the U.S. can match China in this production and revive a solar industry that has been decimated over the past 20 years. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Weiskup, NT News. Minority leader Kevin McCarthy and a group of House Republicans have a plan to combat the CCP's nefarious activities if they take the majority in November. One congressman involved is Representative Randy Weber of Texas. We spoke with him shortly after the group's press conference yesterday. Here's a look. Congressman Randy Weber, thank you so much for joining us on the Capitol Report. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us, Steve. Congressman, you were part of a group of members uh, of Congress that announced a new act uh, to close in on Chinese espionage. Uh, if you could tell us, what prompted this bill? Well, 
I mean, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure it out that the Chinese are not our friends. There is so much history here, and as you know, we're aimed at taking back the House, the Republicans are, and God willing, we'll get the Senate too, and then we'll hold this administration accountable. China has been stealing stuff from us for so long. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, Kevin McCarthy, the m m minority leader right now, he'll be, the, of course, the next speaker. Uh, he went to Nancy Pelosi a couple of years ago and said, look, we ought to, fi ought to form a China uh, task force, uh, bipartisan, both, you know, Democrats and Republicans, and we ought to get to the bottom of some of this stuff. As you know, Trump closed down the uh, Chinese um, consulate here in Houston, the China, Chinese consulate here in Houston. I live in Friendswood, South Houston, about 20 miles. And so China has been bad actors for a long time. Pelosi agreed that we would form a China, that they would form a China task force. And then as it got time to actually put it together, she backed out. They're bad actors. They kill Uyghurs. They are such terrible human rights violators. Uh, and so uh, it's about time. And of course, Biden will do nothing toward trying to rein them in. But that's kind of the background. We know that China's been a real bad actor for a long time. As you know, pandemic really highlighted that. Supply chains are, are bad. Uh, we don't need China manufacturing our medicine, manufacturing our chips and sending fentanyl across the southern border through the Mexican drug cartel. One of the things you also touched upon was uh, China's human rights abuses. Uh, China, China, you know, goes to great lengths to try to keep their image uh, glossy on the world stage. Uh, do you think that this will be something that, um, you know, the Republicans will be talking about more if they were to take power? Well, well, absolutely. And let's take the if out of that sentence when, they, when we are to take power. Uh, absolutely, we are. And you already know this, that uh, the, the Democrats put, I forget the exact total, $240 billion in the last uh, bill to buy uh, solar panels and windmills from, of all places, China. And so we'll be talking about it more and more. We want the American people, the American public to know how bad the Democrats' policy has been. Uh, of course, inflation, you go all, all down the, the kinds of things. And I'm sure you know, the Chinese provide the fentanyl for most of the drugs that's coming from our southern border. And I'm sure you know that and here's an astounding, astounding statistic. 100,000 Americans are, are dying each year, ages 18 to 45, from fentanyl. That, and that's 300 Americans a day. Now, Steve, do this math. Now, that's an entire airliner, more than an entire airliner. We have a major airplane going down in America every single day, killing 300 people, and the Democrats will do nothing about the southern border. China is, is coming in and attacking us to our southern border. The American people need to know that. It's obvious. It's real. They are now in bed with the Mexican drug cartel. And so do you remember El Chapo, Juan Chapo, who was the Mexican heroin king? You know, they, they finally caught him. Uh, China is the heroin and the drug war, and e even uh, <laughs> their best ally, our worst nightmare, our worst enemy, sending fentanyl in to kill our, pe our people from 18 to 45. They've got to be reined in. All of this has to stop, and the border will be part of that legislation, by the way. Carson Randy Weber, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Steve.